Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'd like to welcome you to Lesson 34 from the Distinction Bound Student Grade 12 book written by Cardin Madzokir. This lesson introduces us to the foreign exchange market topic which has 15 lessons divided in 6 units. In Unit 1 we will cover the main reasons for international trade in Lessons 34, 35 and 36. In Unit 2 we will move on to the balance of payment in Lessons 37, 38 and 39. In Unit 3 we will introduce you to the foreign exchange market in Lessons 40 and 41. In Unit 4 we will look at interaction between the demand and supply for Forex in Lessons 42 and 43. Lastly in Unit 6 we will look at corrections of balance of payment surplus and deficits or in short, disequilibria in Lessons 46 and 47. Lesson 48 will be a test on the whole topic. Let's now get into today's lesson. The previous lesson was a test on public sector and so we had no homework. In today's lesson we will introduce Unit 1 by looking at demand reasons for international trade. Countries trade with each other when, on their own, they do not have the resources or capacity to satisfy their own needs and wants. By developing and exploiting their domestic scarce resources, countries can produce a surplus and trade this for the resources they need. Let us look at demand reasons for international trade. We will start with level of income. How do you think the level of income can influence imports and exports? Look at what people do when they start making a lot of money. Do you realize that they start buying Gucci, Rolls Royce and more luxurious goods? Do you realize that the influence in this case is level of income that makes them buy from other countries as opposed to local production? When income levels are high, aggregate demand tends to increase, which often creates a demand for imported goods. For example, someone in South Africa may be influenced by his high income to go for shopping in Dubai. Next is consumer preference and tastes. Demand for foreign goods may exist due to differences in consumer preferences and tastes. For example, someone in South Africa may prefer to buy a Lamborghini from Italy instead of a locally produced car. Next is international migration. Immigrants usually demand goods from their country of origin and due to the existing demand, businesses import goods from those countries. For example, entrepreneurs in South Africa import Nestle Saravita, Lobel's Biscuits Willard's Things, Mezo and many more Zimbabwean products because they know that Zimbabwean citizens living in South Africa will prefer these products since they grew up consuming them. The next reason is the difference in consumption patterns. A country's level of development plays an important role on its consumption patterns. For example, a poor country tend to spend the majority of their income on basics, usually agricultural products produced locally. Whereas, in rich countries, the majority of their income may be spent on international luxurious goods. Next we will look at change in the wealth of the population. An increase in the wealth of the population leads to greater demand for goods. People have access to loans and can spend more on luxury goods, many of which are produced in other countries. For example, emerging economies like India and Brazil have experienced rapid economic growth in recent years, leading to a growing middle class with higher disposable incomes. This has driven demand for a wide range of goods, from consumer electronics to automobiles. Up next we look at the size of population. The size of the population impacts demand. If there is an increase in population growth, it causes an increase in demand, as more people's needs must be satisfied. Local suppliers may not be able to satisfy this demand. For example, China with a population of over 1.4 billion, has a significant domestic demand for various goods, including electronics, machinery, and textiles. To meet this demand, China imports raw materials and finished products from various countries. Lastly we will look at the principle of absolute and comparative advantage. We will start with the principle of absolute advantage. Absolute advantage refers to a situation where a country can produce a good or service more efficiently and with fewer resources than another country. In other words, it is the ability of a country to produce more output using the same amount of inputs or produce the same output using fewer inputs compared to another country. A country with an absolute advantage has a higher level of productivity in a specific economic activity. Example of absolute advantage. Let's consider two countries, country A and country B, producing wheat. In one hour, country A can produce 200 bushels of wheat, while country B can produce 150 bushels of wheat. Since country A can produce more wheat in the same time, it has an absolute advantage in wheat production over country B. Let's now look at comparative advantage. 
Comparative advantage refers to a situation where a country can produce a good or service at a lower opportunity cost than another country. Opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative foregone when choosing one option over another. A country with a comparative advantage has a lower opportunity cost of producing a specific good or service compared to another country. Example of comparative advantage. Let's consider the same two countries, country A and country B, but now they are producing both wheat and rice. In one hour, country A can produce 200 bushels of wheat or 100 bags of rice. In the same hour, country B can produce 150 bushels of wheat or 120 bags of rice. The opportunity cost of producing one bag of rice in country A is 2 bushels of wheat, 100 bags of rice divided by 200 bushels of wheat, while in country B, it is 1.25 bushels of wheat, 120 bags of rice divided by 150 bushels of wheat. Comparative Advantage Analysis Country A has a lower opportunity cost of producing rice, 2 bushels of wheat per bag, compared to country B, 1.25 bushels of wheat per bag. Country B has a lower opportunity cost of producing wheat, 0.83 bags of rice per bushel, compared to country A, 0.5 bags of rice per bushel. Based on this analysis, country A has a comparative advantage in producing rice, while country B has a comparative advantage in producing wheat. Therefore, it would be beneficial for both countries to specialize in producing the good in which they have a comparative advantage and trade with each other. Country A can focus on producing rice and export it to country B, while country B can specialize in producing wheat and export it to country A. This way, both countries can benefit from trade and enjoy a more efficient allocation of resources. As usual we conclude our lesson with Activity 30 from page 65. Question 1. Justify level of income and development as reasons of international trade. 8 marks. That's it for today's lesson. The next lesson will cover supply reasons for international trade. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, complete and no answers versions. Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.